Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our ComBiBis webinar. My name is Sylvia Schreiber. I'm from ComBiBis, and I will navigate you through the webinar with our expert lecturer, Dr. Caroline elston Shiru. She's from Aiming Consultancy uh, in London. Aiming Consultancy is a, a consultant office, a firm who helps companies to improve their business performance. And Caroline works there as a manager specialized in EU grants and especially uh, are there for uh, helping scientists to set up business plans, customized business plans for scientists. So Caroline is a biochemist by training and she will uh, tell to you and explain in a very sophisticated manner how to set up a business plan being a bioeconomy researcher. But before I want to give a flash introduction with the next slide please, seven things you should know on business plan writing and make you clear when you enter to this exercise. So you need a clear structure in mind to write a business plan and our webinar with Caroline really shows you how to structure, how to start a structure. You should also before you start make up your mind to highlight your business idea in five sentences and be clear, do this for a non-expert audience. Define from the start who could be your potential clients users or customers of your product or maybe you have a process or a service to offer. Highlight the benefits of your services or products for your potential users or customers and think about your unique selling point. What excels you or stands out from competitors? Describe also or think about describing your marketing measures and much more which Caroline will tell you in a minute and write your business plan on your own but get professional support from people like Caroline. And there, over to Caroline elston Shiro, business plan writing for bioeconomy researchers. Caroline, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Good morning, everybody. Uh, and thank you for, for tuning in to this business plan webinar. Uh, I hope you all had a, a good Easter break and that you're ready to dive into the business of planning with me. Um, this webinar is designed sort of as a high-level taster uh, and as Sylvia said is, is based on sort of fuller workshops and training sessions that we run uh, for knowledge transfer at universities, for SMEs uh, or indeed uh, research active organisations or companies here in the UK or around Europe. Um, next slide please Marie and the next one. Thank you. So I just wanted to give a bit of background information on myself. Uh, as Sylvia said, I started my career as a scientist, uh, completing a PhD in biology, biochemistry in 2004. Uh, I decided then that I wanted to change sectors and moved into consulting and advisory, but knew that I wanted to keep in touch with the science and technical side as well. Um, so now I have over 12 years experience in research and development and innovation funding. Uh, as well as uh, in other various incentives. Um, I worked for a long time based in France and now I'm back in the UK heading up the grants team here at Aiming London. Um, here at Aiming I've worked with academics, universities and companies from all over Europe and all shapes and sizes uh, from SMEs I guess to, to large international brand groups. So let's crack on and, and take a look at business plans. Next slide please Marie. Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was to start off by putting the entire subject of business planning back into the overall context of science and research as that's obviously an area um, that's familiar to all of you. Um, and I want you to think about how many times over the last few years you've worked on submitting a research and development funding application. Um, so this could be an internal project or going for some national funding. Uh, or even some European funding, uh, and I'm sure many of you know all about that. Um, and every time you put together a technical research project, I'm guessing most of you will also have slaved over the obligatory uh, Excel research budget as well. Um, my point is that if you've worked on writing and developing a research project, then you actually have got one foot in business plan territory already. And in the next few slides, I'm going to explain why this is the case. Next slide, please, Marie. So my next question to you is this, does anybody recognize these layouts? I'll give you a few seconds to have a quick read through. 
So the one on the left hand side, as most of you will probably recognise, um, is the template for European Commission Horizon 2020 grants applications. And the other one is a basic business plan template. So if you Google business plan, you'll find many different versions, but most of these sections are fairly standard. Um, and if we go through the Horizon 2020 template section by section, Marie, if you could just click again. Thank you. Um, we can look at the similarities, for example, between the contents of the objective section as well as the concept and approach with the business plan sections on background product technology. Um, moving down in Horizon 2020 projects, we come to the ambition section where we find things like state of the art, uh, competitor analysis, and in the business plan, we find market, environment, competition, industry. Um, pretty similar, I think you'll agree. Um, and so then the impact section, which is often the section where business plans slide seamlessly into Horizon 2020 proposals. Um, here we often talk about commercialization strategy and then the business plan of marketing and sales. So again, quite similar contents. Um, the Horizon 2020 proposal then moves on to implementation and operational planning. And so does the business plan considering IP, risks, management, uh, and of course the financials. Uh, sort of budget or resource section. So if we zoom out a little bit in our analysis, Marie, if you can click here, thank you. I think we can group these sections as follows. A business plan or a indeed a project proposal will always start by telling your story um, and then it will be followed by an external and an internal analysis. So that hopefully demystifies the contents of a business plan a little bit. So why don't we go and look at it all in a little bit more detail. So if you are considering building a business plan, then clearly you have an idea that you think has potential as a new product, platform, um, service, or a technology that someone else might want. Something you have has got some kind of intrinsic value to someone else that they might want to access or buy. And that really is your first step. You must work out what need or business opportunity your idea answers and work out where you want to take it. Um, you'll also need to carefully explore your business idea and find its distinguishable features and you have to do this by asking yourself some pretty tricky questions. So for example, why your technology or product and not someone else's? How does your idea compare to existing solutions? Why is it better? And what bigger picture challenge or need does it address? Moving down to the, to the people infographic there, on your business and funding journey you will constantly have to pitch yourself and your team. Um, and so here you need to highlight not only their technical background, but every aspect that adds value and demonstrates your team strengths. So for example, this could be senior management experience or perhaps presence on boards. Um, so often this could be perhaps standards boards or an editorial journal. Um, presence in networks or sector-based associations. Any previous business acumen, so for example, as a CSO or perhaps a technical advisor for a startup company. Next slide, please, Marie. So then we come to honing in on your business proposition and in a nutshell, your target audience needs to quickly understand what opportunity or idea uh, or need that your idea addresses. And to do this, you need to find your target market and explore the current trends and conditions. Um, and next you need to identify who your target customer base is, how you're going to find and engage with them and the commercialization strategy required to reach that market. Um, and here I have a, an example for you, and this is actually from the health sector. Um, I find that there can be sort of quite nice examples um, in the health sector because the regulatory aspects are long and obviously stringent rules apply. Um, so if we think about an SME with a potential new therapy, immediately we think that the customer base is clearly the patients who require the new therapy. But it's not only the patients that we need to think about here for the commercialization strategy because you also need to think about the long clinical trials, all of the ethical aspects, and ultimately registering the drug in each country for use by doctors, hospitals, and ultimately reaching the patients. So the regulatory and compliance bodies become part of your target market and indeed your commercialization strategy. So you have to consider all of these aspects to get a new product to market. And for every sector or specific product, you really need to think about your route to market. 
Um, apart from your team, you also need to think about who else you need around you to help make your business work. So it could be um, operational business support, so obviously solicitors, finance advisor, bank manager, funding specialist or investors, or perhaps more technical or market orientated skills that you need to address, uh, such as regulatory issues, perhaps IP, uh, consumer panels in agri-food, policy, standards, contacts, etc. Really, all of those contacts you need to surround yourself with to help get things moving. And then we need to consider what if things don't go according to plan. Um, and for me, uh, just like rules, plans are there to be broken and adapted, and you must think ahead. Um, what are the potential obstacles of risks, and what can you do to anticipate them, either to prevent them occurring, or at least to minimise their impact on your overall plans? Um, and human nature does quite like to ignore potential risks and say that everything is fine. Um, in business plans, do not ignore the risks or your competitors and make sure you do your research on them. Uh, and in terms of market positioning, this is really valuable information. Um, and if you deal with the risk, you can anticipate and turn around it. And your project or business plan obviously doesn't exist in a void. Um, but knowledge of your market space will also actually help you to build your strategy going forward. Next slide, please, Marie. So then we need to think about how much money do you need to implement all of the above. Um, business plans and financial plans obviously go hand in hand, and getting finance from any source can take time. Um, so you should always start off planning the technical side and the value proposition of your offer, and then build up the associated costings and, and figures. So be sure to plan well ahead and determine a few key factors as soon as possible. So for example, you need to be thinking about how much money you'll need, when you will need it, um, what are the setup and operating costs, and when will you start making revenue. And establishing these milestones of your business early will help to keep you on track further down the line. And the final point is business models. Now this is often a bit of a nebulous and difficult concept to get a hold of, um, but recently some top entrepreneurs have sat back and thought about it to help the next entrepreneurs coming along behind them. Um, so your business model is basically your roadmap on how your business will create value and generate profit. And that is, after all, the bottom line purpose of setting up a company. You want to make money from your idea. So this involves thinking not only about your market, but also where your position in the sector value chain, how you will establish relevant distribution channels and partnerships and what the cost uh, fee structure will look like. Um, now, I'd just like to conclude on business models and introduce you to a chap called Alexander Osterwalder. Um, Alexander Osterwalder is a Swiss entrepreneur who has mapped out a business model generator tool, which should give you plenty of material for looking into this a lot more um, during your future business and funding journey. Next slide, please, Maureen. So here is the, the strategizer business model canvas. Um, and if we can get it to work, the, the next uh, slide has got a short two minute clip, which will explain this in a nutshell. Now, what is this language about? It's about nine building blocks. Nine building blocks that allow you to describe or design every business model you can imagine. So ultimate possibilities, thousands of alternatives. So let's watch a little movie, two minutes, that will explain what the business model canvas is. So if I explain it, it will probably take 15 minutes. So that's why we made a movie, so you can get a quick overview of the business model canvas. An organization's business model can be described with nine basic building blocks. Your customer segments, your value proposition for each segment, the channels to reach customers, customer relationships you establish, the revenue streams you generate, the key resources and key activities you require to create value, the key partners, and the cost structure of the business model. But it's not sufficient to just enumerate the nine building blocks. What you really want to do is to map them out on a pre-structured canvas. 
This is what we call the business model canvas, a tool that helps you map, discuss, design, and invent new business models. Let's briefly go through the nine building blocks, starting with the customer segments. These are all the people or organizations for which you're creating value. This includes simple users and paying customers. For each segment, you have a specific value proposition. These are the bundles of products and services that create value for your customers. The channels describe through which touch points you're interacting with customers and delivering value. Customer relationships outline the type of relationship you're establishing with your customers. The revenue streams make clear how and through which pricing mechanisms your business model is capturing value. Then you need to describe the infrastructure to create, deliver and capture value. The key resources show which assets are indispensable in your business model. The key activities show which things you really need to be able to perform well. The key partners show who can help you leverage your business model, since you won't own all key resources yourself, nor will you perform all key activities. Then once you understand your business model's infrastructure, you'll also have an idea of its cost structure. So with the business model canvas, you can map out your entire business model in one image. This works for startup entrepreneurs just as well as for the most senior executives. So, nine building blocks, pretty straightforward. The individual building blocks are not new. Probably most of you know every piece of it, right? If you looked at business a little bit, you have an idea of what this is. But the important thing here is that we have all nine on one slide or on one poster if we print it out. And that we understand how they all fit together. So we get the big picture understanding. Not just the product, it's for the engineers in the room, products, great products are becoming a commodity. It's the combination between great products and a great business model that's going to keep you ahead in competition in the coming decade. Thank you. So next slide, please, Marie. <laughs> so uh, a really useful tool to know about, uh, and we use it regularly both internally and indeed for our tailored workshops with clients, so um, a really excellent support there. So um, business plan demystified, or what a business plan is not. Um, for me, um, a business plan is not just the financial plans and a P&L. A business plan is telling your story. Um, as we've seen just there as well, it's not a plan in isolation. It involves positioning your business idea compared to an external bigger picture. So it involves external as well as internal analysis. Um, a business plan is not written perfectly first time round, it's an iterative process and it will evolve over time. And finally, these are not necessarily chronological tasks, they all feed into each other and they are never quite done um, because markets change, competitor landscape changes quickly, so business plans need to be updated on a regular basis. Next slide please, Marie. So to conclude, this is a, a business planning checklist that we have on the back of our more detailed business planning brochure available. Um, so please do get in touch with me if, you, if you'd like a copy of the, of the full brochure. Um, and that's the end of this business planning webinar. So thank you for your time and attention, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll pass back to Sylvie now to see if there are any questions and to close. Yes. Uh, can you hear me again? Thank you, Caroline. Uh, Marie, can yes, hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Caroline, for this fantastic um, session and lecture. I think uh, we can bring it to the point to make money from your ideas. That's a business plan, and we have uh, a couple of um, um, webinar uh, participants out there, and I want to ask if there are any questions open, you're free to ask them now. You can do this in written procedure, uh, we can chat then. So uh, if there are any questions open, there is now a very fabulous opportunity to liaise with uh, Caroline, and please write your questions. While doing so, I have one question to Caroline, um, which uh, she, I'm sure she has a valuable answer. I saw for scientists the most 
uh, important exercise of a business plan write, uh, 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 writing is get out of your scientific bubble because if you have to think about other key actors, key connections, is this a uh, specific efforts, effort for scientists, Caroline? What is your experience? Um, yes, absolutely. The, the, one of the key points that we have, and, and this is not only for um, scientists who are still within academia, but also for um, some quite established SMEs um, who are uh, sort of spin-outs from, from uh, universities, um, is that the technical side um, is always obviously the first point that you start from. but. Along your journey, you need to realize that a lot of the people you will be talking to, pitching your idea to, um, are not as technical as you are. And so you really need to find a kind of elevator pitch. You know, how would you describe your idea to someone who is not from your sector, or your domain, or your niche? Um, and that's really the, the most important thing to uh, work on as a first point. And if you if you know practice on your friends and family, they can often be the first ones to listen to your ideas. Try and explain it to your grandma, um, you know. And if those uh, if you can make them understand, then that's a good first good first step. Yeah, very good. So actually, it has to do a lot of a lot with communication and communication capabilities and that's also why we do these webinars uh, with people like you Caroline because you can explain this perfect from your practice from your expertise and actually show people start to communicate start to think uh, and tell your story to an audience which is not in your bubble which is not an expert audience but which uh, could be a, a, a future client or a future customer for your product or your technology. Again, I'm asking the audience if there are any questions so far. I didn't see anything. Caroline, would you like to add something to your presentation or to the audience we just had? Um, no, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think I, I've said everything that, uh, that I wanted to during the, the presentation. Exactly. It was a fantastic uh, high-level uh, lecture, I think, on business plan writing, showing that it is the bigger picture, putting together the elements on one picture, on one canvas, as you used the term. From my side, there are no questions left. Um, I have to tell the audience that this this webinar is recorded, it will be uploaded on YouTube and also it will be uploaded on our website so everybody can retrieve the slides from there and if some specific uh, PDF versions are needed, here you have on the last slide my email address, so address to me and I will send over you the slides to you if requested and of course you can contact Caroline for any professional support in the future. Thank you very much everybody and please stay tuned. A new webinar is scheduled for 2nd May. It is a test for the 4th May, sorry, 4th May. We will have Smart Agri, Smart Food. Some projects are presenting their uh, flash ideas to an expert and he will offer feedback. So please stay tuned for our next Combibis webinar. Thank you to everybody. Thank you to Marie, the technical support, and thank you again for Caroline, to Caroline for her fantastic lecture. Goodbye and speak soon. Bye.